like for Sin Skies, once you've installed and enabled uh, Sin Terrain, you will find all the panels it created in the Scene settings. So in each of them you have several options, but the easiest way to understand them is to uh, start by generating a terrain. So in the Scene Terrain Shape Presets panel, click on the Generate Terrain button. And you will see uh, in your scene a new, uh, two new objects, the terrain and the water volume. Each time you generate a terrain, by default it is unique and different. So you can try a few times until you find uh, the terrain you like. If you switch to rendered mode, you'll notice that the terrain is pink and this happens in Blender when an object hasn't got any material set up. So you can uh, create the material by hand yourself, or you can also use the uh, options in the Scene Terrain Material panel. You can leave everything by default and hit the Generate Terrain Material. After a few seconds, you'll see uh, different textures applied uh, on the terrain, the mountains, flat area, the beaches, and the underground, uh, uh, the underwater, sorry. And here it is, you have a default terrain ready for uh, rendering. Let's see the different generation options in more detail. In the general options panel, we'll start to see uh, the random seeds uh, setting. By default, it is zero, and this means you will have a different terrain every time you generate a new one. If you change the seed to any uh, value other than zero, let's say one, for example, now the terrain will stay the same. If you change the seed to another value, let's say two, generate a terrain and you have terrain corresponding to the seed number two. And this is very useful to understand uh, what the other options do uh, when the terrain stays the same. The terrain scale setting controls the default scale of the terrain object every time it is created. By default it is 0 0.01 and you can see it in the 3D viewport by pressing N on your keyboard to open the, uh, the properties panel and you can, see, you can see the scale here in the transform panel you have the scale 0 0.01 and this is what this uh, settings controls. With the terrain resolution setting you can control how dense the uh, terrain mesh is and the more dense, uh, the better it is uh, for the, the visual quality of the terrain. It will look a lot more detailed. So if you uh, switch to the uh, wireframe mode, drawing mode, you, you will see that the terrain is a grid uh, and it's deformed along the, the Z axis. And uh, when this uh, grid is dense, the terrain will look uh, more detailed. And you control this, uh, this resolution here. So let's say if I reduce it to 32, for example, we'll have the same terrain, but with a, with a, a more uh, sparse um, mesh, uh, grid mesh. And you can increase it to a higher value, like 256. Generate again. And now you can see that it is a lot more uh, detailed. If you use a very high value, you can open here the uh, system console in Windows and you will see all the progress uh, while the terrain is being generated. This is useful in case uh, it takes a lot of time to create the terrain. The next parameter is the terrain side length. This value is in kilometers and this controls the uh, length of each side of the terrain. Below you can see uh, the surface in square kilometers. So as you update this value, uh, these will be updated as well. So let's make a terrain which is uh, two times I mean, when the side length is twice as big, the surface is four times as big. So let's try it. 
now you can see that we uh, see a bigger portion of the terrain before we could see only this this part and the rest has been created the terrain has been expanded the shade smooth option lets you have your terrain smooth shaded by default when it's created so if i enable it and generate the terrain again you will have the same but this time smooth shaded you can export the terrains to other 3D software. You can do it the usual way by going to the file menu and then you have all the export formats available here in Blender. And you can also use scene terrains uh, export options. There is the raw format and there are two sub formats. One is uh, useful especially for the Unity game engine and the second one is, unit is useful for both Unity and Android Engine 4. So choose the one you, you uh, need and then you click on, click on the button, navigate to the folder where you want to save your file, type in a file name and don't forget the row, to use the row file uh, extension. Click on save and you have also the option to uh, generate a height map image from the terrain. So you click on it and uh, go to the UV image editor and you will see the scene terrain output height map image. It's a grayscale image and uh, representing the terrain heights where white is high and uh, black is low. In the shape presets panel, you have all the options to control the shape of your terrain. At the top, you start by choosing a, a shape or a type of terrain. You have three for now, the mountain chains, eroded craters and eroded mountains. Let's see what they look like. So I set the seed to zero, so we have a different terrain each time. And I, I generate mountain chains and you can see they, they look like this. So really they are, they are mountain chains and they are quite steep. The second one is the uh, eroded craters. They're very similar to the mountain chains, but they form uh, circular uh, craters instead of being uh, linear chains. And the third option is the eroded mountains. And this is a typical, this is the typical type of mountain that we, that we see every day. So once you've chosen the type you, of mountain you want, there are all these options for you to further control this, uh, this shape. So first you have the size of the of features and it's in meters. This controls the size of the lakes and the mountains. So large values mean that you have large uh, mountains and water bodies, as you can see. So that makes everything uh, bigger and uh, a larger scale. On the other hand, if you decrease this value, then you have a, you'll have a very heterogeneous terrain like this. I reset the value back to its default. Next, you have the jagged amount value. This controls how eroded and jaggy your terrain is. So if you start at the lowest value, which is 1, you will see that your terrain will be very smooth, like uh, almost like waves. And as you increase this value, you will see your terrain becoming more and more refined. So if I set the seed to something other than 0, so this is jagged amount 3, then you have 4, and you can see your terrain uh, approaching its final shape. And below you have the water and the mountains options. For each of them you can control the amount of water or mountains you want. This is a, a, a percent, percentage. So if you want a lot of water you increase this value. And if you want a lot of mountains, you also increase it. And now everything is either mountain, 
is either a mountain or <laughs> or below the sea so this can be useful for uh, very wild areas for the water you also have the depth you can control how deep the water bodies are and this is in meters very useful to have uh, shallow or, or very uh, deep uh, seas and you have the water level option so let's let's see what my terrain looks by default and this is how it looks and if i change the water level this controls the tide of the sea so by default it's minus three meters below uh, level zero if i set it at zero then you will see that the sea is very very close to the to, the, to level zero on the ground and if I set it to something smaller, like minus 10 meters, then you have a low tide, like this. Okay, and the last option is the height of the mountains. Keep in mind that this value is approximate, it's just, you're just telling the, the, uh, the engine that you want about that, the mountains about that high, but they may be above or below that point. If the options in the shape presets are not enough and if you need a very precise control on the shape of your terrain you can close this panel and open the next one which is a scene terrain shape from height map texture if you open it it will say that you first have to create a blender internal texture named scene terrain source height map and we need a blender internal texture because they offer a lot more control uh, and they also provide uh, different kinds of uh, procedural noise functions and let's see how, how we do it so first we need an object to hold the material and the texture that we are going to create so we can use any object in your scene or we can create a dummy one you can even make the, this object invisible if you want this is just to this is just an object to hold the material and the texture for this material so also i forgot don't uh, don't forget to switch to the blender internal render engine so now with my new material i create i associate a new texture to it and i name it uh, scene terrain source height map once you've done it you can check in the uh, scene terrain options now the texture has been detected and you can see that we now have the buttons and the options if you leave the uh, uh, the, the texture empty uh, as i did if you generate the terrain it will be uh, all flat because the because the an empty texture is black by default if I go back to the texture options and we'll make oops we'll try to make the texture more interesting by going into the node editor select select the object that holds the, the texture and go to the texture node uh, editor and hit use nodes now my texture is uh, is made of a node setup and now you have very uh, very fine control for example you can use different kinds of uh, of uh, noise procedural noise functions you can also uh, import an image for example you can import an image from another terrain editor or you can make an image yourself Let's try to use a noise function, like for example, the clouds. So I plug the color output of my cloud node to the color input of the output node. And this is what the final texture looks like. And remember, uh, we are creating a grayscale texture and the white areas represent very high areas on the terrain and the black uh, 
pixels on your in your texture represent the low areas of your terrain. And if you switch to the top view and orthographic, you'll see that the terrain corresponds to this texture. So let's try to generate the terrain from the texture. And we have it. Now let's try to have some more flat, uh, somewhat flat terrain around the mountains. And you can do it using the uh, convert uh, color ramp node. So I'm not going to explain all the nodes in detail. This is a, a very broad topic and a very important aspect of Blender. But I, I'm going to show you a few, a few tricks uh, in, this, uh, in this tutorial. So the color ramp is useful if you want to remap a color from the input to another color in the output by uh, creating color stop like this. So you create a color stop with the plus button here or using control plus left mouse click. And once, once you have them, you can move them like this. And when they are selected, you can change their color. So remember that the color controls the height on the terrain. So white is very high and uh, black is very low. So if you want, if we want a flat area on the terrain, then we need to uh, first decide the height. Let's say 0.5 for middle height. You can copy with Control C, copy a color, put your mouse over the color, Control C, select another stop, Control V over the color. And now we can see in the output, uh, what the terrain will look like. And all these gray areas here will be very flat, as you can see, because they are the same color, the same gray level. And if I'm correct, now if I try to generate the terrain from texture again, then the terrain will stay the same, yes. And that's if that happens, this is because of a very long lasting bug in Blender, unfortunately. And this is because it it seems I th I'm guessing that the internal representation of the texture in the memory or something uh, hasn't been updated. Even though we see the texture updated in the node editor, Blender still thinks it's it's the same texture. So to force to force Blender to update its uh, the texture internally, you have to switch to uh, rendered mode this and I think if you plug it pl unplug and replug the output node then that forces blender to to do the right job switch back to solid view and click on generate from terrain from texture now we have it but uh, our flat flat terrain is under the sea so maybe that's what you want if that's if that's not what you want you can either uh, decrease here the, the value of the flat flat area or increase sorry increase the value of the flat area to make it higher and you can also here control you have a few options in this panel you can control for example the water level in percentage and this is the the percentage represent the height of the water zero means the water is at the very low lowest point of the terrain and 100% means that everything will be covered by, by water because the sea level will be at the highest point of the terrain. So let's do, by default it was at 25%, let's make it 15%. Now it's a bit, uh, a bit too low, but uh, we cannot see the sea because we haven't got uh, uh, lakes and holes in, your, in our terrain. So let's correct that. Let's do it now. Uh, we can do it with by moving those like this. Yes. So if I try to generate the terrain again, I ah oh yeah, this time it worked. So I know this terrain looks horrible, but uh, this is just a demo video. So I'm I'm exp I'm showing how to do it and then you can take the time to do it properly. Uh, 
by using a, a combination of nodes and uh, uh, of texture image textures so if we increase it very slightly like from 15 to 17 percent now we can have different lakes and water bodies once you have the terrain shape you you want uh, you can control the height of the uh, the, the mountains with this setting here because even though you still you can say what what points on the terrain are high and what points are low you still have to say how high and how low and this is controlled with this this setting here it says the max height difference and this is the max uh, difference in height from the lowest point to the highest point on your terrain and right now it's it, it's set to 150 meters if you increase it let's try to double it and if i generate it again then you can see that the all the um, everything is more i mean the mountains are more high and the, the lakes are more uh, deep and there is one last option it's this one the random translation allows you to uh, have a random terrain each time you uh, generate from your texture so this is really this is only useful if your terrain is tileable that means if you're using if it's entire, entirely based on uh, a noise function then your terrain is tileable and if you are using a image an image texture and this image is tileable then you can also use the random translation otherwise don't don't use it because it will look very weird so by translation we mean that the source texture will be will be randomly translated on translated on the x axis and the y axis if you enable it don't forget to also uh, set the seed to zero if you want a different terrain so let's try so as you can see the terrain is different we are using a different part of the source texture the seed also works so if you want to have uh, the same terrain every time you can also use the seed so i set the seed at one and you see that the terrain stays the same scene terrain can also create the materials of the terrain for you very easily the options are in the uh, scene terrain material panel and in this panel you'll find first you can select what area you want to uh, set a few options for and below the options then you have the generate material button so let's see what the options do you choose for example let's say flat area and then we can choose what texture we want to apply on that area so you click on it and you by default it will display uh, a few textures that uh, comes that they come bundled with the uh, scene terrain so let's say that for our flat area we want uh, something like a kind of a marsh and uh, for our uh, mountains we want something like uh, for example this some kind of rocky texture and finally for the beaches um, let's say this kind of uh, you have the sand here or, or let's say this kind of white texture once it's selected you can also choose uh, the size of the texture on the terrain but first let's see uh, what our terrain looks like so when you click on the generate terrain material this may take some time and when it is done you will see your terrain updated automatically so this is in rendered mode if it's a bit too slow for you while you're trying to uh, set up your materials you can also uh, switch to the material drawing mode like this and this is a lot uh, faster to render 
so you can see the textures are correctly applied uh, right now my flat area and mountains look a bit similar so let's change the flat area to something else let's choose this kinds of farm and here it is then you have the options uh, below to control how how big the texture is uh, when it is mapped onto the terrain so right now for example my flat area texture is uh, one kilo about a kilometer uh, big in uh, for each side of the texture so you can change the size here and you can see it in real time being updated the same for the mountains And when you're ready, you can switch back to rendered mode or launch a render. There is uh, something important to keep in mind is the material since it generates, which you can see by going into the uh, node editor. Let's see what kind of material is generated. So there are, there are two big uh, Two big groups one is for cycles and then the other one is for the blender internal render engine uh, for cycles you have all the different uh, texture layers added like this with mixed nodes so you can see here you have the flat area texture group the underwater texture group the beach texture group and uh, mountain texture group and the urban texture group. This is when you're generating a, a city on your terrain. And all of them are combined together using uh, mask textures. So this is the uh, underwater mask, the beach mask, mountain mask and urban mask. These masks are not saved by default. So if you save your file and if you reopen it, then the masks will be gone. And you can save them by going into the UV image editor and you'll find them like this. They, they are named Scene Terrain Mountain Mask. Uh, you have Underwater Mask and the Beach Mask. So when you see the, uh, the small uh, star here that means that your image is not saved you can either save the image or you can uh, pack you can pack everything into the, uh, the bl your blend file and then when you open the file again then your terrain will look exactly as you left it another thing to remember is if you modify the terrain material then you should not, you must not create another one, another terrain, or even generate a new material. Otherwise, all your changes will be lost. So try first to do as much work as you can using scene terrain. And when you're ready and you want to further customize your terrain and its materials, then stop using scene terrain.